uh, let's just uh, start. It's sure. five past. Let's see then if uh, someone else will join uh, later. So, um, um, as usual, uh, uh, okay, we lost core. That is not a good start. And yeah, the Stitchy is really toxic to browsers, as I had to experience yesterday. But once the browser is refreshed, it lasts for two hours. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, for what concern uh, this uh, session? Uh, as for the first uh, that he had, we had on Monday, uh, the idea is to uh, have a place uh, where uh, community and members can uh, uh, interact uh, directly live with the board candidates. So, of course, uh, uh, thanks uh, also to the candidates that uh, found uh, the time for joining. Uh, if you have uh, any feedback uh, on the previous session uh, or in general uh, this one and the next one uh, that uh, we will have, uh, feel free to share because this one is uh, a new format uh, that we are experiencing. Uh, and we can definitely improve and do better next time. And uh, for what concern of the elections, uh, I want to use this opportunity also for a, a quick uh, uh, information. So yesterday we generated uh, the token for the elections. So every one of you should, of you, of the members that are in this group, uh, should uh, already have. Uh, the, the email uh, with the um, uh, token uh, for uh, for voting. Of course, the uh, system uh, it's uh, still uh, not accepting uh, uh, votes because we still have uh, uh, this uh, phase between the nomination and the start of the election. But uh, uh, token uh, are are there. So if you are a member and uh, the email is missing, uh, let us know. Check your spam folder uh, or any other weird uh, filtering uh, method uh, you are using. So, apart from uh, the general uh, information, um, we have some uh, questions uh, that uh, uh, we could uh, we could use for the discussion. But uh, as the uh, previous uh, session uh, could be nice to to have uh, an introduction from uh, from the candidates, in particular from uh, the one that uh, uh, were not uh, uh, attending uh, uh, on uh, on Monday. So um, let's uh, start with the uh, with the order. I'm just following uh, the the order that I can see in uh, in the in the room. So the first candidate uh, and it's. Uh, also starting with C, so it's easy. It's uh, currently, let's say, five minutes for introducing yourself uh, and uh, telling uh, to uh, the attendees uh, why uh, you are running uh, for the board and what you would like to achieve. Stage is here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my name is Colo McNamara. Uh, I've been working on LibreOffice for, well, since the beginning, really, and I worked on OpenOffice before that, and I worked on StarOffice for a brief period before that. Uh, I work Red Hat for a long time as well, and I work on uh, Red Hat's uh, desktop team, and LibreOffice is my speciality within that. So I maintain that. Um, I work specifically on integrating LibreOffice into that desktop, so GTK ports specifically, uh, lots of things around that, really. And that's what I've been working on there. Uh, I did serve on the initial board, I think, back, uh, back at the very start for a period. And yeah, that's my introduction, really. In the meantime, uh, any uh, question uh, for uh, for him directly now, or shall we just move uh, to the next uh, candidate? Feel free to raise your hand uh, or to speak. Okay, so uh, next is Emiliano. So, hi, hi all. I'm Emiliano Vavassori. I'm coming from Italy. Uh, my daily job is uh, help desk support and uh, system administration and networking mostly. Uh, I came in contact with the community not so much long ago, but 
uh, I was immediately fulgurated and uh, I was proud to be on the project and uh, try to uh, push it on the marketing and uh, on the event sites most often. Uh, I am uh, actually a director in the actual board, which is going to end uh, in February, and I'm already candidating for the next one, so I'm here. Any question for Emiliano? Okay, so let's move on. Gabor, stage is yours. Yes, hi, uh, my name is uh, Gabor Caramel. I came into contact with LibreOffice in around 2012 as translator and uh, in recent years I have uh, worked for the company called NIS, which is a, a Hungarian state-owned uh, internal IT services company and we had tried to introduce uh, LibreOffice and develop for, uh, further and further uh, to tailor it into the Hungarian public administration's needs. And uh, this is my first time uh, running for board membership because I think uh, I had some very variable uh, experiences during my uh, time at NIS, which have, I have uh, recently left and uh, joined uh, Allotropia as uh, quality assurance uh, position. So this is all in short. Any question now for Gabor? So next is Gabriel. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, hello, my name is uh, Gabriel Marseille. I'm a senior C++ developer at one and one company. Uh, my main uh, task here is to integrate uh, 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 LibreOffice Online and Collabor Online into our, uh, uh, our online office uh, products. Um, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm pretty new in uh, in LibreOffice, uh, comparing to to probably most of you, or definitely with the other candidates. I'm uh, um, I uh, I have an experience in LibreOffice for about three three years, and uh, in open in in general in open source. Uh, I was uh, very ple pleasantly uh, surprised. Uh, 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 while getting into contact with the open source community, and uh, I want to uh, to learn more about more about it, and uh, I want to get uh, more involved into into open source community. That's what I'm. Uh, I accepted this uh, challenge to get candidate to the board. Um, also, I'm a, I'm a developer for around for uh, more than seventy years. Uh, uh, of course, uh, most of my experience is um, uh, <clears throat> on uh, related to projects, to Windows projects. Uh, but since uh, uh, since three years ago, I'm I'm working in uh, in uh, in uh, Linux and open source projects related to LibreOffice. I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, any question for uh, for Gabriel for the moment? So next is Paolo. The stage is yours. Hi all. Um, I'm Paolo Becchi. Currently, uh, well, living in Luxembourg. I'm Italian, but then I lived also 15 years in the in the UK, more or less, going back and forth between England and uh, Italy. 
Uh, I've been working uh, uh, on well, with open source uh, for the past 20 years. Had about 35 years career in uh, in IT, uh, and then I started also uh, promoting uh, LibreOffice about eight nine years ago, uh, and I managed to get also my uh, city council to uh, migrate to LibreOffice, and they're still using LibreOffice uh, about um, eight years ago. I've been uh, so uh, serving for this uh, uh, this um, period uh, the uh, uh, in the board as a deputy uh, director uh, and uh, at the moment I'm also promoting uh, uh, open source based cloud services and platform uh, just to demonstrate that we can actually uh, achieve digital sovereignty by using open source uh, software in general. More or less that's it. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Paolo? So, Thorsten, the stage is yours. Yes. Um, good. <laughs> Let me try to remember what I said yesterday. Um, so, uh, that's kind of consistent. My name is Thorsten Behrens. Um, I've been working. Uh, so I've been contributing to open source, that's where I started yesterday, since um, many years. Like, I think first first patches to some uh, some project were in 96. Um, I'm a computer scientist by education. I started uh, with the uh, old Sun team, 2001, um, on the open office um, code base. I was doing um, mostly impress and graphics subsystem there. I moved on uh, to SUSE in 2008. I'm still working in open office. And then I was among the group of people um, who started the LibreOffice project. And I was serving on the um, the, the first the steering committee and then the first board and have been on the board since then. Um, I've been doing many things, started with development, but um, was um, also doing a bit of sales and um, migration training bits. Um, I moved from SUSE to a um, smaller company um, in, in Munich uh, in, 2000, in 2015, um, also um, helping the, um, the city of Munich there, which was one of our uh, customers. And I started a completely new uh, company. We, we spun out the open source um, part of, of the CIB, which I was um, working for um, uh, last year. And since January this year, I'm running my own company called Allotropia um, with um, all the, the great people from um, that I was building, uh, the, the team that I was building there. Yeah, and since then, we're happily serving customers, old and new, um, uh, and doing LibreOffice, um, mostly um, um, consultancy, bug fixing, feature development, um, but also, again, training and migrations. Um, as I'm very, very glad that um, Gabor um, recently joined us um, and is also uh, running for the board. Um, right, and um, that's about me. Very much looking forward to your questions. Thanks a lot. So, any questions? For the moment, no. So, next is Carl. Yeah. Hello. Good evening again. Uh, my name is Cora Naus, uh, the Netherlands, uh, involved in, in open source basically since 2004. First, I worked for a company doing uh, sort of Microsoft uh, and Lotus Notes uh, stuff, and then I didn't like it, and somehow open source attracted me. I started with openoffice.org and, well, of course, landed in the community back then. Um, I'm also active a bit in, in open source in the Netherlands, have some contacts, obviously, with Linux groups. I work, at, sometimes I, I talk with people in the government or with members of parliament or, or local uh, uh, people in, in administration, but it, it's all quite tough in the Netherlands, but still in, interesting to encourage people. Um, I was at the TDF, Document Foundation LibreOffice, at the start back in 2010 got involved in the membership committee and always in, in the community active in a bit of marketing, local activities. 
especially just meeting people at random and chatting how things go and, and what we can do together is something I like. Maybe more chatting than working, but uh, some other people may think I'm lying there. But it, anyway, it's always good to, to have contact. So it, it's obvious that the last two years are a, a, sad, a sad time for me uh, and many others. Um, uh, oh yes, we, we we meet in the Netherlands and we have uh, marketing communication and we do some QA. I, I did quite some QA a long time ago and worked in the membership committee for the Document Foundation. And I joined the board some two years ago, four years ago. Uh, I have my small company doing a lot of work in the Netherlands for smaller, very small companies, companies and sometimes for local administration or sometimes some huge, uh, let's say, government uh, institutes in the Netherlands, so smaller and, and uh, larger customers mixed. And the last two years, I'm my biggest customer, as, as I say it, is, uh, is uh, Collabra Productivity. Uh, I know many of the people from the start of TDF and even longer, and I, I help them with, uh, with doing marketing stuff. So, uh, Happy to be here again, and uh, I hope to be on the board. That's it, I think. If, but maybe there are questions, or later on in the evening. Maybe later. <laughs> it seems. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so next uh, is Candy. Uh, usual uh, introduction. Uh, also for uh, the, the recording, uh, so something about you and something uh, uh, about your idea for, uh, for the board. Okay. Yes, thank you so much uh, to all of you that, uh, that you managed to join, uh, join this meeting and that uh, you are willing to listen to, to us here. Uh, so I am Jan Holeshovsky. Uh, many people know me as Candy. Uh, mostly on IRC in chats and, and everywhere, like even in normal communication. I live in Prague uh, in the Czech Republic, and uh, like I've been an open source contributor uh, for decades uh, now. Uh, I've joined SUSE in 1999. Uh, like in November, it was just 22, 22 years, yes. Um, I've uh, started contributing to OpenOffice.org at the time uh, in 2003. Um, doing some KD integration, then stuff in filters and, and many other things. And uh, yeah, with LibreOffice, uh, uh, like uh, I'm from the very beginning, uh, I was uh, like among the founding members uh, in there. So, uh, so yeah, with Torsten, Core and others. And uh, yeah, primarily I'm a developer. And, uh, um, but these days, like that is not that much uh, that I would be touching that much of the code. Uh, it is more that I'm helping uh, like others uh, uh, in, in my team in Collabora Productivity uh, to like uh, get, uh, uh, get started in LibreOffice, like when they are new developers or, you know, help uh, the, uh, the less experienced developers uh, become more experienced developers in general. Uh, so, like mentoring and welcoming new newcomers is, uh, is something that I very much like doing and and uh, focus on, uh, on a lot. And uh, this is also uh, like why I would like to to join the board of directors actually. Uh, so making it easy for contributors to uh, to make things done. So so that's that's why I would like to join the board. So I think that's it for me. Thanks a lot. Uh, any questions for uh, Candy for the moment? Don't be shy. I don't know if Alexander has um, a question, for example. Um, <laughs> anyway, he was asking if uh, the uh, provided questions, um, written ones, will be uh, followed or not. I mean, uh, I think that they already uh, answered yesterday, but obviously uh, maybe that I, almost surely Alexander wasn't there so the question is, I don't know if it's the case or not to uh, repeat those replies <laughs> or maybe just, you know, forward uh, to the recording, for example. So for the questions from uh, Alexander, we didn't use uh, uh, his uh, um, set, so we can directly uh, have the questions uh, today and uh, 
let him uh, clarify more if something is uh, needed on the um, answers. Um, so let me start uh, directly with uh, with those. And uh, as um, uh, we were doing uh, also on Monday, uh, I will uh, also copy the questions uh, directly in the chat so it's easier to read and uh, uh, it's also uh, better for the recordings. So uh, the question from Alexander, this one was the first one. And uh, let me also read it. Uh, the question was, uh, uh, how do you envision LibreOffice uh, in the SO and uh, Enterprise as a true tool uh, to do actual work or a functional clone of Microsoft Office? And for SO, I suppose it's a small office, uh, home office. So anyone uh, from the candidates that uh, wants to answer? Um, can I answer if you wish? Okay, raise your hand. Torsten no, no, was first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it this way. Torsten was first. <laughs> okay, I didn't raise my hand, but but I raised my voice. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'm not sure um, I, I, I get, really get the distinction, but maybe you can could clarify a little bit. Um, um, as a true tool to do actual work versus a functional clone of MS Office, which tends to imply that you can't do real work with MS Office. Is, is that what you're asking or? Uh, we can't hear you, Alex. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Indeed. OK. I uh, activated the wrong microphone, uh, I think. <laughs> Uh, it is this from my little perspective i i work in a relative yeah in a not not so big organization of about 100 people uh i do it there and ob obviously <laughs> it, it, it's a windows environment uh, with uh, ms office uh, and here and there uh, um, there are uh, some users of uh, of Nextcloud as an example, uh, but mainly is a is a very standard. Uh, but fortunately, they chose not to use uh, uh, three six five, so it's only only the standalone applications. And I tried to to speak with uh, with the, with the manager uh, endorsing. Uh, LibreOffice, but it's very, very difficult uh, to even start talking about it because it's uh, we experience uh, a number of problems with MS Office, but those are always dismissed as little things, but they are not always so. And uh, trying to um, introduce uh, thinking about a change because I know that it's not big but it's not a it's not a small office and so it's quite uh, uh, complicated because there are always many tangles here and there and I see that the real problem is the file format not the pro not the program itself but the fact that it is uh, very difficult to track uh, the changes in in the in the X O, -O M L formats that's very very difficult and uh, uh, it shouldn't be so <laughs> because uh, what's wrong is 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 the proprietary format and not the use and and not the um, the application itself so if any program was able to read and write correctly the standard format, uh, the playing field would be level and uh, all the efforts uh, should uh, uh, be um, directed towards the 
the um, development of the functionality of the, of the software and, and not as it's the case in, uh, using a lot of development resources that are precious towards uh, seeking of uh, 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 interpretation of the proprietary format that's hindering in, in my in my point of view uh, the development of, of LibreOffice because it's forced to uh, go round and round and not focus on the, the primary uh, uh, applications. What do you think? Yeah, um, <laughs> so that's that's quite a, quite an all encompassing um, <clears throat> question. And um, so the, the thing is that as, as a director of, of TDF or on the board of TDF, um, the, the actual influence um, on, on what um, the community does and, and therefore how, how the, the, let's say, products, it's not a product, LibreOffice is, is more like, uh, it's like a project and the, the side, side effect of that is downloadable um, um, products that you can run. But, but the influence and the impact of, of the board is actually not, not that large um, in my experience. So, so the, the project does what, what the, the collection of, of all the people are doing. And, uh, and therefore, and of course, the board can suggest things. The board can perhaps direct a certain amount of resources. But at the end of the day, um, what, what we probably, that's, that's, that's questions we need to discuss inside the community where, where people would like to see that the project go and, and what's actually needed. And in my personal experience as someone who, who did um, quite a bit of migration work and also worked with customers who've, who've already migrated, the realities out there is, is quite a mess and quite difficult. There are, there are organizations where the only way to get LibreOffice in is by being able to interoperate with Microsoft documents. So, so cutting that off cuts off those opportunities because it's a, it's a step change. If you tell somebody who wants to migrate, throw away all your old documents or laboriously redo them or, my, or kind of retype them or convert them into, into ODF, they will say, well, this is just too much work. Um, um, can't we just do it step by step, little by little? On the other hand, of course, you're right. It is a nuisance and you're fighting a massive uphill battle there as a project because there's an entrenched monopol like convicted monopolist with billions of, of dollars they, they can stick into development. Um, and, and we're kind of always been like trying to follow that. Um, but but I, I don't think that's a question that the board would, would ever have a solution for. We can perhaps provide a vision there where we would like to go. My personal vision clearly is to, to be this, this Swiss army knife to, to try and understand, read and write every possible office document format out there and be as compatible as humanly possible because that's actually what's really super useful. That's why, why LibreOffice is the, the premier choice if you want any document conversion. All those services that get to PDFs um, out of your email attachments are actually running LibreOffice um, in the backend most of the time. Even Google Docs is running LibreOffice to convert all the, the formats that they couldn't be bothered um, uh, to, to write a converter for uh, and produce um, ODF. So if, yeah, it's not really an answer, <laughs> but it's, it's a reflection on the question, perhaps. Now I understand that it's massively complicated and it's uh, 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 an act of balancing uh, priorities in everything, but as only a true standard, while uh, the, the Microsoft format, it's not. Ah, it's, it, it's so frustrating. <laughs> I'm, I'm personally deeply, deeply, deeply um, uh, connected with, with ODF. I've been on the TC since 2008. I just left it um, and, and had one of my, my engineers join because I um, just didn't have, the, 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 couldn't afford the time um, that takes anymore. And, and it's, it's just so much cleaner as a format, but, but the realities out there is like, as you say, trying, trying to find a balance. <laughs> 
Thank you. Paolo? Thanks. Hi. Um, yeah, I mean, you touched uh, uh, a few uh, kind of opportunities and uh, an issue that I think a SubTDF is going to have to deal with. Well, um, I've been personally involved uh, in actually campaigning for ODF uh, uh, well, when I was in the UK. So I was one of the guys that being such a pain in the arse to the UK government that they accepted actually to uh, adopt ODF at the standard file format. Um, I've been a so real pain with the Euro European Commission. So now they are working naturally on uh, uh, on various, let's say, opportunities. They are not saying yet that they will adopt ODF, but I think there is there is a good chance that it's going to happen soon. Uh, and also because I've been a, such a pain with them that finally they updated the LibreOffice mm -hmm. that they have in their um, app uh, app store, the internal app store, of the, the European Commission, and this is something that is happening all over. Uh, various uh, uh, European institutions. I do agree that uh, it would be good to have LibreOffice being compatible as much as we can every other week, uh, if possible, with Microsoft format. Okay, but that naturally is a up, uphill battle because every software they just decided to change something and you know something breaks. Uh, so the their format, as you said, is not a real format. Uh, they still use the traditional uh, format of their own standard, uh, so they are not even applying the the the, uh, the standard that they wanted to to, to put together. Um, from that point of view, there's an, uh, an interesting incident that happened uh, at the LibreOffice conference in Rome, where I believe the Microsoft representative uh, was going to talk about the big effort that Microsoft uh, was making to uh, uh, to adopt ODF or any way to become compatible with, uh, with the F. Uh, had issues, so it, I think she couldn't connect the um, the laptop to the uh, audio video system that we had in Rome. So at the end, she did the presentation with my laptop, with Ubuntu, and LibreOffice. And her presentation just loaded up very nicely, so she, she's been able to do the Microsoft presentation using what, <laughs> in a way, they are fighting against. So, in a way, uh, interoperability uh, still happens. Uh, but still, I believe that as TDF as well, we should get involved even more in the process of, let's say, setting standards for the, uh, for the even for the public sector, so promoting standards. At the moment, I'm also involved with the uh, Coalition for Com Competitive Digital Markets, which is trying to, uh, in a way, change some of the uh, rules of the uh, Digital Market Acts, so that at this point we can uh, actually implement proper interoperability also with the document format. So you see that there are so many things that we got to fight against, uh, you know, to try to get a result that then are going to bring us to, uh, uh, you know, a level of, uh, uh, let's say, interoperability or market presentation where, you know, the fine format, if the right one is chosen, like ODF, then that won't matter in there. So you will be able to exchange your document with whoever, you know, prefer to use Microsoft Office and still use them in uh, in uh, LibreOffice. In terms of usage or LibreOffice, well, I haven't been using a Microsoft product, I think, for the past 10, 12 years. Uh, so, I, uh, you know, I don't have a Windows uh, PC, even at home. Uh, we are all using between Linux, Mint, and Ubuntu uh, on the servers Debian uh, and things like that. So even when I'm working, I have to exchange documents with various European institutions with which I'm working, for example. Well, they send me a docx and I send them back on ODF. Okay. And mm -hmm. after the first complaint that Microsoft uh, Office will say, well, the, the file may be corrupted. They just learn to say, okay. And the document just opens without issues. Okay. So in a way you have to, uh, in a way, go through the first uh, little issues and especially uh, habits from uh, from users that they are used to use that icon to, to see those uh, those icons in the, in the in the platform, uh, and then after a while uh, things will uh, will get much better. Keep in mind that I think recently uh, we recently uh, saw uh, announced in the uh, uh, in the blog that uh, another German uh, uh, province is migrating twenty five thousand users to LibreOffice and Linux. They're probably going to do it in a more planned way than 
uh, what um, uh, let's say Munich uh, did, hopefully with a you know less kind of strict kind of uh, use of only pure open source and so on because a good mix is uh, especially at the beginning is important. Uh, but I think that is going to be a great success that then going to help you as well convincing mm -hmm. your boss that is worth migrating. <laughs> yes, yes, but I hope it's uh, it's a success. Yeah, it's getting easier <laughs> and easier. Okay, thank you. Next is Candy. Okay, so um, this question, if I understand that correctly, like you are mostly interested in the file format things. And uh, so from my point of view, uh, from my point of view, uh, like this is not exactly a question for the board. It is more a question for the engineering steering committee, uh, because like board um, as the body and uh, the people there like should be mostly interested into uh, in the freedom and uh, in the freedom and the community uh, having the freedom like to develop like in the in the direction. And then of course, like if there are like decisions, like what to do, uh, actually, like if to focus more on like one thing or the other, there's this engineering steering committee to actually make decisions, like uh, if like things are competing in some way. And concretely in this uh, in this way of uh, like what what like uh, should we do more focus on the on the ODF or like uh, support for the Microsoft Office format. So one thing that is uh, that is essential in the engineering steering committee and uh, when people are developing and the engineering steering committee is encouraging uh, this is that like whenever there is a feature implemented uh, that supports something in this uh, uh, that is in Microsoft Office formats, uh, there have to be unit tests for that and there has to be an ODF implementation. So there has to be like first of all like some kind of like extension. Um, of the of the ODF uh, that is only read by by LibreOffice, but also like uh, there has to be proposal uh, for standardizing that um, so that like it properly gets into the ODF. So I think like it is uh, uh, it is not necessary to fight against uh, extending LibreOffice in the uh, in the area of the uh, of the Microsoft Office formats. Just because like people have the freedom to do that, like if somebody wants to de develop that, they should. They have the freedom. But there are these rules like that cannot be Microsoft Office only. Like it has to improve the ODF as well. So that's what yeah. I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's this fact that it's it annoys me so much and you just said it that uh, as soon as there's a new uh, characteristics in uh, uh, coming from office whatever it is we have to implement it and <laughs> it seems like uh, uh, a game of cat and mouse and uh, and 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 big m is playing with uh, uh, in introducing those differences, maybe just to make difficulties. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. Compelled to accept every so change that's... and make it ours. Uh, if, uh, the, we're not, we can't. That's, the, uh -huh. that's the same thing. Like, we do not have to. Like, nobody forces us. But, like, when a volunteer comes, or you know, um, a company uh, that uh, that develops for LibreOffice comes and decides, okay, like we just need to do that. Like we have a customer who wants who wants this, or a volunteer decides, okay, well I've got a presentation and I I just cannot read it and I want to implement this, and we say, okay, you have the freedom to do that, but like if you decide to do that. Like you have to extend the ODF as well so that it is interoperable and it's good for ODF. So we are not forced to do that. It is that people just come and and have various motivations to do that. So that's what I wanted to say. Like it is not that like somebody somebody from board would would come and say, like you, you have to you have to implement no, this not, and that. Like uh, not, not like that. So. Not in these in those terms, but in, in the in the in reality uh, it seems that 
there's a, a excessive amount of pressure on following every change and maybe it's easier so to lose focus on what as a community we are doing or but, but it's not I am just... only the off or the only that <laughs> no, 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 far from. No, no, it's, no, not no. A, it's not a, it's not a zero-sum game. So it's not like you have this volunteer who does either this or that or that. It's the volunteer that comes and wants to do this one thing. So, so it's not that you lose something by this person doing that because this person wouldn't be doing anything. So, so it's a bit, it's a bit more difficult. Of course, you're not wrong that that broadly we could do other things there, but um, it's also not like tell them off, like no more Microsoft support. And then suddenly we would be having lots of people there who would be doing great feature work elsewhere. That's no, no, really but works. I understand, but I uh, briefly uh, got through the release notes of the latest uh, release. And there are many, many, many improvements on the interoperab interoperability with DocX. And uh, it's okay, but at the same time, it's 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 also uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, not enough focus on on the core applications because uh, development resources are limited, and if we if we uh, do uh, re re refinement work on uh, on on the uh, on the Microsoft formats is all energies that we cannot use to uh, uh, implement new functions on our own. Or, or or am I wrong? I'm not a developer, so it's <laughs> I I I know it's complicated, but. From outside, yes. <laughs> but but I agree with Tosten here that that like it is not that like uh, these developers like who are like fixing something in interoperability would like suddenly like if they didn't uh, like improve the interoperability would would like uh, improve something. So uh, like some, something like related to ODF or you know I don't know recreate uh, the UI like from scratch or, or anything anything like that. So like they have various motivations and like for companies, it is usually that they have a client that uh, that just is interested in this or that thing being fixed in their document. So, so like if, okay. if the customer wants, wants this, like it's, it's hard to, to, to tell them, okay, well, you know, um, I, I know that like this presentation doesn't work for you, but like, we can offer you that uh, we will recreate the menu a better way. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, I, it's, I understand, that, but it's just <laughs> so, like from, from that point of view, the ideal would be, of course, uh, to to improve LibreOffice uh, uh, so much that like people love to use that, and like uh, you know, the adoption comes like from the bottom up. So like people are used to using LibreOffice at home just because like they love it. And they they like create pressure um, in in their companies. Okay, like we want to use the office here as well because it is much better than Microsoft Office. Yeah, really and of course, cool. like we as developers can only find that like by using Microsoft Office from time to time as well. So that like we have the comparison. <laughs> also, we have to use the Google Docs from time to time. But we have to use like other office office suits to to see like how how mm -hmm. they are doing, to be able to see like where we are lacking as the office and. Yeah, because, uh, here and there on some workstation, uh, uh, I installed uh, LibreOffice to do things that weren't possible in uh, with Microsoft Office. Yes, and so, there are many, of course. And this is very rewarding, <laughs> but but at the same time, uh, I see that wow, maybe ninety five percent of all the documents that I see, uh, which are not particularly complex, 
don't uh, cause any any issue in uh, uh, being read by the libre the office there's always the, the, the fonts problem but it's an, an entirely other thing. so let's try to uh, to follow a bit uh, the the order uh, next was a uh, car yeah thank you uh, marina yeah, it, 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 it's a bit a mixture of, of things, uh, uh, Alexander. It, it, uh, it, as, as you, you say, and, and can you say, uh, there, are, there are qualities of LibreOffice on its own. Uh, and, and yes, of course, uh, uh, open documents is, is the best way to go. On the other hand, uh, many people are just forced to use uh, Microsoft Office files because they get them from left and right, etc. So uh, having the possibility to improve one thing and the other thing, uh, it all, all can be important. And um, sometimes indeed there are customers, larger organizations uh, or, or whatever that uh, pay for improving uh, working with Microsoft uh, file formats, which, which is useful. Uh, and, and another thing is that uh, uh, the Document Foundation does have tenders uh, once in a while for, for various stuff, making things in, in the community possible with tooling, uh, or sometimes improving things, very specific things in, in LibreOffice code that, uh, that, that are really needed and somehow are, are not worked on. So, so it, it could be that, that, that for some parts, uh, the route that the Document Foundation does some, some special tender, some special project to, to encourage developers to work on, uh, on uh, uh, better handling of Microsoft formats, uh, that's possible too. So th there, there's not, a, not a one a single solution. It, it would be ideal if, if authorities, if government move to open document fast. Uh, but reality that th is that it goes slow. And when they say they will, then it, it takes another three, four, five years uh, in, in which Microsoft uh, lobbyists, or sorry, people informing about Microsoft uh, Office uh, uh, will make it go even slower. Uh, so, but, but offering good stuff to people and encouraging them to, to enjoy LibreOffice, that's the basis. And then uh, when we improve step by step, uh, I'm sure it, it will only get better. Okay, thank you. That, that's my hope. <laughs> Next is uh, Kuala. Yeah, um, just to say that um, I initially worked on the Microsoft Word import and export filters, the binary format, not the contemporary XML one. So I'm kind of familiar enough with uh, the complexities uh, of that. And one of the issues, of course, is that an awful lot of what's in the specifications doesn't really help you uh, in your implementation. So, for example, you know, if, you, if you've got a text box that's five centimeters wide and it has a one centimeter wide border, where does that one centimeter wide border go? Do you center it over that uh, nominal five centimeter wide border area? Or do you put that centimeter outside the box or inside the box? All that information isn't, isn't captured in specifications. So, you know, as, as, a, as a word processing file format, what you need for layout to actually make it the same as Microsoft Word isn't, isn't captured in the docs, which, you know, you're always going to have problems there. So. You know, you could you could lobby to say, you know, Microsoft, you're going to have to document far more of how your uh, layout mechanism works, so that we can actually interoperate properly with you, and and just state that what's in the specifications isn't really, you know, enough information to 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 you know for somebody to compete against you properly. You know, you could make that argument. Um, but the other thing that you said, which I think is very uh, the second part of your question, is something I think is is important, is that, you know, the original intent of those import export filters wasn't uh, for constantly importing and exporting and importing and exporting. The hope was that you'd import your documents and then you'd live inside in LibreOffice and that was your environment. And occasionally you'd export to some poor misfortunate who hasn't decided to, 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 to migrate yet. So the fact that they can even be used at all for constantly round tripping is, is a testament to how, how good they are. But 
that wasn't, you know, that's not their core strength. Uh, there's always going to be uh, problems there. So yeah, so if you made a bit better LibreOffice so that people use it, other people want to use it too, and then your interoperability problem goes away. That'd be, you know, the ideal scenario. So yeah, I can I can see your frustration that what you would prefer is uh, people just to make LibreOffice better and all those resources that are in interoperability, if they were redirected towards, you know, making a, a better product, then maybe that would be a nicer thing. I can, you see, we see that happens to other, other applications. I mean, people like Keynote over in Apple, they don't care about import export. You know, you're part of the Apple infrastructure. You've, you've, you've drank the Kool-Aid. You, you love Apple so much, you, you don't care about any of the other products. I don't see people complaining that much about Google Docs. I mean, once you're in Google Docs, they're trapped in there. Um, they're, they seem delighted by that. So yeah, we, we obsess about interoperability. Um, and other, thing, other applications don't, and it seems to be okay for them. So yeah, I see that. Um, the other thing that I would say is that with, with, with interoperability, while all these things probably not really fully relevant for the board, what might be worth putting on, you know, for the board to think about is, is what happens when Microsoft changes their default font in, in Office 365. Um, we don't have font building expertise um, in our community, so we probably need to uh, think about that, what we're going to do about that in, in the next couple of months, really. I yield the floor. Next is Gabor. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Especially when fonts are not free. <laughs> and so it's, they can't be uh, be appropriated, right? So it's, it makes it uh, more com still more complicated. But okay. Gabor? Yes, okay. So this question really, really comes into my uh, alley because in the last uh, five or so years, uh, this is what I have been doing. Understanding thousands of documents. Why do they work? Why do they not work? What can we do inside LibreOffice to make them work? And how to improve uh, LibreOffice? Uh, so I'm pretty, pretty convinced that uh, we should definitely improve interoperability. And the team I have built in NIS uh, proves that this is entirely possible because we had only one experienced uh, developer, uh, last name at also runs for board. He's just uh, not here right now. And he built basically completely uh, new developers from from total beginners, and we had achieved so much, so much uh, improvements in terms of interoperability that we started to hit the walls of LibreOffice's capabilities. So we could not implement something interoperability-wise because LibreOffice did not have the feature itself. So in some areas like uh, charts, we hit that, and also change tracking was another uh, offender. I like. I would like to uh, tell everyone here that improving the interoperability is absolutely a must if we want to uh, remain relevant. Uh, and I would like to try in the future years. Uh, convince everyone that this is the way forward. Uh, when our project start, uh, started five years ago, I was, uh, I was told that my uh, naive approach to convert everyone to ODF is just simply not going to work. People who told me this were not developers from LibreOffice or, or uh, experts by any means from programming side. They were public administration people. And uh, they said, Gabor, either we improve this uh, software or that is not going to happen anything. And I think there is so many, so many uh, other 
small and big enterprises who are not with us exactly because of this. The way they see the world is that they have a working solution, which is Microsoft Office, and uh, they may like it or not, but that's what they have. They have invested very, very many work hours into creating existing documents. Those documents are valuable assets. Their value is the wage of the person who made them multiplied by the hours they made them. If we, the LibreOffice software, makes any mistakes, either by, by opening it or by saving it, then we are destroying value. And uh, this does not really scale when you have 10,000 uh, users in a single organization. So this is why we need to improve interoperability. And I am fully convinced that this is uh, possible. Another thing or worry of yours is that uh, Microsoft is changing up the format all the time. No, this is not happening. This is not, simply this is not happening. Since 2010, they are investing very, very little into changing up things. I have seen it. Because most of our users used 2010, and we had newer versions in, in the company, and it was not changed a lot. Things that were features of Microsoft Office 2010 are mostly the same in new versions, but they still don't work in LibreOffice, despite that we have this uh, reference since 10 years. So it's not a real huge change since 2010 or so, but our difficulty is that we are not, not capable of offering the uh, features that 2010 Office had in the first place. So if we reach that level, we are fine, mostly. So I think uh, that's my idea on this, uh, on this uh, question. Uh, before giving uh, uh, the 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 scene to, to Gabriel, uh, please uh, have a look at the chat uh, because uh, there are uh, two questions uh, around uh, documentation. So when answering, uh, in any case, try to always answer uh, with uh, with your potential uh, uh, director hat uh, and not as uh, just as a developer, because in any case, uh, uh, that will be the, the role uh, in the board that you will uh, uh, try to, to cover. So don't think on the, uh, on the technical side of, uh, of the question. I would and, ask something uh, like, um... Since there are um, many questions uh, raising up, uh, I would suggest to be a little bit shorter on answers, just because otherwise the, um, there won't be enough time for everyone to, to answer. So I think that if you can, please try to be shorter and uh, allow all the others to, to reply to all the questions that are rising up. Thank you. Gabriel? Uh, yes. So. Uh... I think that almost all that has to be said about this subject was already said. But uh, <clears throat> I just want to underline that uh, uh, the inter interoper interoperability is, uh, is very important. As someone who migrated from uh, <clears throat> Microsoft Office to, to LibreOffice, I encountered some issues. And I know people who, uh, who wanted to migrate to LibreOffice. Let's give a try, something like that. Uh, encountering all kinds of issues and uh, they decided to go back to Microsoft which is a pity but uh, <clears throat> this is the reality so I think that interoperability, interoperability, interoperability is very important to encourage people to to give them a smooth uh, path to to um, uh, open a document format to, to, to LibreOffice. This is uh, this is what I wanted to say first and second. Uh, I think that uh, sometimes I, I don't think that inter interoperability um, 
uh, to control of the entire development. I think that sometimes in some versions, probably interoperability, interoperability uh, is more important or uh, uh, developers manage to finish more uh, stuff on that uh, topic. But I think that uh, uh, development of uh, open document format and um, uh, or the work on the doc document format and um, and in inter interoperability are um, going um, in parallel, I think. But sometimes it happens that one of the sides, uh, let's say, let's say it takes control. But uh, I think that this is just an impression. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Emiliano. Okay. Sorry. Uh, this should be good. So, uh, very quickly, I don't want to touch the first question because mostly of what I would like to say has already been said, so that, that's it. I think inter interoperability at the moment is a must, unfortunately. Uh, I would love to see uh, all the people using ODF, but that's probably not happening, at least in a short time. And uh, um, uh, key to this would be to have it as a standard format from the um, public and uh, politics mostly. So that's that's it. Uh, we have to deal with interoperability if we want to um, get more contributors first and then uh, and then have a bigger community. So that's only where I would like to leave that. Uh, so for the other questions, uh, I was overseeing the documentation team. Um, so I have to say that the documentation team does a pretty heavy job and pr pretty fine yeah. job, to be honest. Uh, the point is there's, as always, a balance to be done in what the people that is using uh, the, the documentation wants. So for once, I completely understand that probably people are much more pointing out to the web resources much more than the printed one, or um, let's say a, a more a book format or something like that to print out and, and something about that. So uh, yes, there's this issue where there are people that need something much more uh, lighter and much more readable, much more accessible than a book, uh, a digital book, to be honest. There are other people that instead prefer to print out these books and just read the documentation from there, having uh, the documentation like maybe you can see up here, I have some books and uh, I, I try to check it out sometimes. Uh, so um, that's that's uh, something that we have to balance out anyways. Um, printed books and something very, very formatted will not die in sometimes in a short time. Uh, either we have to uh, improve much on the on the webs on the web part. Uh, there's the online help, which helps, but it's not documentation, to be honest. Uh, well, it's not formal documentation, let's say. Um, uh, the other question was uh, about uh, what would you do to increase the number of companies of the ecosystem? Oh, and the strategy to increase the ecosystem from Europe. Well, there was another question before. Sorry, guys. Uh, there was our same question. What would you like to improve support for languages other than Latin script in LibreOffice? Well, I have to admit I am not technical enough and I don't understand the issue too much, to be honest. I know there are issues because uh, also Shinji prepared a lot of slides about uh, issues with the Japanese and uh, the more Oriental languages, to be honest. Uh, I'd started trying to analyzing them and Probably there's some uh, some efforts to be put there in, in in terms of money, in terms of sponsorization of some development or something like that, which we should have to to check about that. Uh, so um, 
the other issue which was uh, um, underlined by Olivier, sorry, I'll try to get shorter and then uh, I'll leave the, the question for the others, but I would like to touch all the, all the questions. Uh, so Olivier said there's a concentration in uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, which is similarly true. In the last 10 years, there was some uh, somehow a shrink in the number of the uh, companies of the ecosystem. Uh, we try to brainstorm also on, our, also on this board on how to increase that presence. Uh, we come to some conclusion, we had some right ideas, to be honest, uh, that unfortunately didn't came uh, to light mostly because of time and uh, other, other, uh, other efforts, to be honest. But anyways, there's, uh, th there was the idea of having a, a book to introduce people in uh, uh, developing and guide them through the first steps of developing. So that was one of the uh, ideas. Uh, my my point on that is that the, the development barrier is probably high in the project, uh, and that's why we 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 have checked about that. Uh, I'll leave that to there because I know that our other people want to to reply also. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next is uh, Torsten. Okay, thanks a lot um, for all the questions. So um, I think I would start from from the bottom. So I, I will work myself up so I can maybe cover cover the last questions a bit um, more. Um, which was um, Olivier's question about the um, how to grow the ecosystem um, and what to prevent, what to do, how to prevent concentration. Um, I think it's a difficult question in a way that, that I, I, I don't think it's even, I, I wouldn't probably even agree that there is excessive um, ecosystem concentration. If you, if you compare that with the early days, there, there were like mostly Linux, uh, Linux companies um, having developers um, on payroll. And then there was uh, um, a relatively small um, volunteer developer base. And of course, there was the existing open office um, volunteer um, QA translation documentation, etc. Um, group of people. Um, but if you look at the ecosystem, it's I wouldn't say it's smaller. I mean, we have l large and small companies there. We have um, some shining bright examples of government actually paying developers directly by hiring them. Um, from at the bottom, so if you ask for how, how to grow an ecosystem, the easy answer is just make it very attractive to, to be part of that ecosystem. If it pays, um, if it pays off, if, it's, if, it, if it makes business sense uh, to be there, then, then people will, um, will found companies. There's a very large roster of certified LibreOffice developers. Um, there's migration and training professionals all of that um, form the business ecosystem. They, they earn money most of the time um, with their uh, with their work, um, and I, I wouldn't say that has shrunk over the years. Um, I would probably venture the guess with with the with a, with, with if if you count um, Open Office, um, Sun, Oracle, IBM. To, to the to the larger ecosystem, I would agree. If you're not, then I don't think we're much smaller than, um, um, if, if, if at all smaller. On the other hand, um, never rest on your laurels. So um, on the question of how to grow that, just make it attractive. Make it, if it makes business sense, then um, there will be new, I mean, it, it made business sense to me um, to, to continue with uh, with with LibreOffice consultancy, so I I, I took my, my my life savings and invested it and um, founded a company and hired hired out all the all the people there, uh, and I'm sure this can be replicated. So so you you need a, you need a certain climate there. You need to make sure that um, um, that there is space for ecosystem companies um, to earn some money. I mean some somehow 
the, the money needs to come from somewhere. You need to, and, and that's what, what um, TDF also did in, in the past years, kind of tell people who are using LibreOffice uh, in, a, in, a, in, in their business, like depend on that in an enterprise or, or in the government, then it, it's kind of, um, uh, they, they should be encouraged to actually um, contribute back and it can be by hiring developers, that can be by paying uh, companies. Um, but but um, just just the um, free riding on um, um, on the work of volunteers and the donation of, of, of many, many, many thousand people worldwide, if you are an enterprise, is kind of not cool. Um, in terms of um, how to increase the ecosystem out from Europe, I don't think that is per se. So I, I see that, I, I know there's, there's, for example, um, professional development happening um, in in Asia uh, with with um, with um, paid developers. Um, it's essentially the same recipe. Like make it worth their while. Make it make the, if it makes business sense. Um, and and the good thing with something like LibreOffice is that um, you can perfectly work on on that project remotely. So. If it makes business sense to, to found a company in Taiwan or in China or in I don't know Australia to um, to serve local uh, customers to serve local clients or the government uh, with LibreOffice technology, um, uh, people will probably found the company and then hire developers uh, and another staff to um, to fulfill their needs. Uh, replying to this before uh, moving to Candy, uh, as a as a member of the board, uh, I mean uh, it's clear uh, that you would like to uh, to see also as a a company uh, ecosystem mem member you would like to see uh, TDF uh, uh, like a place that is uh, attractive. But uh, with with your board hat, what you could do, what you want to do for uh, making uh, this uh, happening. Yeah, so I think we'll continue on the path that we started, uh, which is um, clearly differentiate between um, uh, the, the, the many use cases for LibreOffice and leave space for companies and also uh, make companies discoverable, make businesses discoverable. So essentially what we're doing already, have this professional help page, have this um, LibreOffice technology brand um, kind of make uh, companies who work on LibreOffice do something great, make them visible um, and leave some space for them uh, to earn um, to earn money. And that can be that can happen in very many ways. That can be like purely consultancy, that can be training migrations, that can also be product, um, like being able to build a product uh, and not being um, squeezed out of that market, not being um, um, competed away out of existence. Um, by um, by TDF because TDF or the LibreOffice LibreOffice it's kind of this duality but but LibreOffice is is that's my conviction is is not a product it's a project that that happens to uh, have side effects in terms of downloadable installable products uh, and trying so, so the moment TDF tries to be a product company um, that will be that will start to be very unattractive for, for companies then because it will be very hard to compete with with that brand um, and that reach of, of TDF. So so I think one of the recipes to try uh, and um, and to leave a bit of space for everyone is, is if, if TDF really focuses on the project and to foster it and fostering means fostering like all the people that, that happily work on, on the project, that, that is volunteers and that is, that is companies. Uh, where are you positioning the volunteers? Um, I, I find it sometimes hard to, um, to make this distinction between, between a volunteer um, uh, and a non-volunteer. So I'm, I'm clearly volunteering <laughs> my, my, my time, uh, my, my money um, to, to the good cause uh, of open source and LibreOffice in particular. Um, so I think it's not necessarily helpful to have this 
two camps with a fence in the middle. Uh, many, many, many of my my um, my engineers are actually spending most of their free time, most of their spare time doing um, doing liberal for stuff. So, so there are volunteers in a way, and, and so am I. I mean, the board board work and all of that is, is, is not not paid time. So I would hand over to Candy. Okay, so I wanted to focus uh, mostly on this uh, documentation question uh, because it's a great one. Uh, so like many years uh, ago, uh, like I was involved in, uh, in trying uh, like improve the documentation from the like infrastructure point of view. Uh, so first of all, like what what I was involved uh, is uh, was try to actually convert uh, the help system into some kind of a wiki uh, that would be like much easier um, uh, to extend, uh, like from the for the for the outside people. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, the wiki way didn't work out as uh, as a good way, uh, but instead, like uh, we were working with Olivier Halot. Um, hello, Olivier. <laughs> So on the, on like extending the XHP uh, file format uh, for the help with the vision uh, that over time, like we would be able to merge uh, the book and uh, the help into some like common base uh, that would uh, be uh, possible to like, so that like the information would be like in, in one large, uh, large thing. And then, like there would be some additional markup in there uh, that would uh, able that would allow you to say, okay, so I want to generate from this uh, this knowledge, I want to generate the help uh, for LibreOffice, or I want to generate a book from that, or or this. So so that was the vision, uh, like back uh, back when I was uh, was uh, was in the board, and uh, would be just awesome to be able to continue this. So being able to to move into uh, into the world like where we have the information we have it like in some some file format from which like we are able to generate not only the books but also the the web pages or or the help in libreoffice itself so that was this question i don't know if uh, you want to reply to the other questions or hand over to paula um Can i so um i think uh i think like i have not that much to add to uh to the question from 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 olivier uh because uh, like Thorsten himself uh, explained it well and Thorsten him, himself is uh, is a like brave example of uh, of somebody who just uh, uh went into into this uh, this uncertainty of like creating um, an ecosystem company uh, around LibreOffice. And it is just, just awesome what, what he has done here. So and I have nothing to add uh, there. Uh, about the RTL, uh, that's an interesting question and goes again uh, like in the direction of like how to, uh, how to actually motivate uh, volunteers uh, from areas like that that are actually using the RTL so like how to make it uh, attractive for people to actually like contribute and it is hard to decide like from me uh, as as european like what actually motivates uh, motivates like arabic people to 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 actually like contribute into uh, into uh, into the open source project like i know like what worked for me like why i started uh, contributing to libreoffice or open office at the time but like Contributing myself because because like I uh, I come from some some like uh, like cultural uh, cultural environment uh, but like uh, most probably the motivations for uh, for people like in the RTL countries are slightly different and uh, so it would be great uh, uh, to hear from you Hossein like what what are your thoughts like how how it came to you uh, that you like become interested in LibreOffice in the first place, uh, so that like you were able to uh, to become the, uh, the the community architect here. So and uh, like how to find uh, like like-minded people as you, uh, so that like from from there 
uh, there could be potential volunteers who would uh, who would uh, who would love to uh, to to contribute uh, their time to LibreOffice and potentially also like create an ecosystem company who would be able to to do uh, do stuff for the uh, for for RTL. But indeed, I think that uh, probably uh, this is a question about you know. Uh, uh, giving more representative and more space to the uh, Asian and other communities. And so probably uh, you're right, meaning that we should try asking them why and how they uh, got involved in the ecosystem or at least as a volunteers and so on. And yep. because they probably better know how to um, uh, let it be attractive to their uh, communities and to their, um, how to say, um, culture. Okay, if you find with that, I would hand over to Paolo, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you. Well, it's uh, uh, excellent. I see that uh, Candy uh, uh, really kind of answer part of the, uh, uh, my question. Uh, well, the, the, the question I wanted to answer, so it's uh, excellent. Uh, uh, Candy is already busy with the uh, documentation uh, uh, documentation side. And I don't know if, uh, uh, for example, Hossein was wanted to already intervene on uh, on the lang language side, saying that I think he's an expert Indeed, <laughs> in I some of these I languages. Saw, I saw he was raising his hand. I don't know yeah. if... Uh... So, Hossein, you, you want to intervene straight away? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Just wanted to say uh, a few words. Uh, one aspect is uh, gathering uh, users and developers from uh, Asian countries and RTL and CTL and uh, all the uh, complex uh, scripts that are not uh, Latin script. And the other part uh, that is important for me uh, to ask from the board is uh, the uh, emphasis, emphasis on uh, only Latin script languages and uh, what from what I see, uh, the uh, support for RTL CTL is somehow uh, less uh, emphasized, and and as far as I see in uh, tenders and other parts, uh, that uh, is very important uh, to create uh, important features. Uh, there is a, a lack of uh, emphasis on uh, these languages, and uh, there are. Uh, many people uh, out there that are potential users of LibreOffice that uh, I think we should uh, take more care. And uh, what I want to know is uh, what you can do uh, from uh, uh, the position of a board member to improve this situation. So uh, it's just like improving the uh, company ecosystem. Uh, we, we should have an ecosystem of uh, people and developers and companies uh, who work on this area because I think uh, maybe more than uh, one billion uh, users uh, are out there uh, people out there that can be uh, can can be uh, potential users of the office and uh, with the board support I can I think this can improve. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. The number of potential uh, uh, LibreOffice users uh, out there is huge, especially in uh, uh, in countries that don't use the standard Latin language. Uh, so that, that, that is for certain. Being able to uh, actually do something with it, to, to, um, you know, TDF can invest in it, but uh, we need also probably partners that uh, are able and, you know, have the expertise actually to, uh, developed for, for various languages. That, that is uh, uh, absolutely certain. Uh, so probably Hossein uh, uh, and others can uh, can uh, probably participate to help out uh, in uh, in finding uh, so additional partners or starting development or evaluating what type of tenders we can uh, uh, we can create to uh, develop in this uh, in in other languages. Um, regarding uh, the other question, so uh, Olivier. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been uh, uh, difficult up to now to find uh, new uh, members, or anyway, commercial members of the uh, uh, the, the the ecosystem. As Sovigliano commented, uh, the the barrier 
to start developing for LibreOffice is, uh, is quite high. Uh, naturally, I had a look at it uh, so with uh, other friends uh, that ch uh, check the code and there's a, a lot to do before you can actually start doing any development. So it will be interesting to, uh, to, to see if there is any other way to simplify uh you know they develop it in certain uh, certain uh, at least certain area of uh, LibreOffice. uh it is just so true at least for what i've seen uh during this term the i mean the number of commercial ecosystem uh um, seems to be quite small uh so a big effort needs to be made to uh to increase the number because uh you know we lack in uh, in, in the sense of uh, uh diversity how to find them well it's still <laughs> it's a difficult uh, difficult question uh because then then at the end uh, it's true that maybe there are there are other organizations uh that can grow and and uh, in, in a way develop their skills in terms of migration in terms of uh, uh training for LibreOffice. In a, in a way let's say that that is the easy part uh, the development part is a bit more complicated. That's why, you know, to uh, help in a way the transition or in a way to support us the development, I wanted to actually ask the board to uh, invest in internal developers. So while we are funding uh, so additional ecosystem members, uh, then at least we can speed up certain type of developments. Then in terms of the, uh, uh, you know, the relationship with the uh, uh, members of the, the ecosystem. This is an, uh, something else I wanted to, let's say, clarify, uh, because at the end there has been uh, naturally developments uh, uh, of, let's say, extensions of LibreOffice uh, for which there have been no clear rules when they happen, okay, when this development happened. So then uh, naturally uh, uh, that could bring to certain type of conflicts uh as it happened uh in the past and i would like to avoid that i would like also to invest in certain projects but naturally to be able to for tdf to invest on the uh, on those projects we have to create these rules so we can welcome this project uh and we know that at the end there will be a benefit for the commercial organization but so for the community of users many of the many of the users you know they are free users they want to be free to use the the platform without uh, let's say commercial commercial connection, so we got to be able to uh, allow that. So at the end, is also up to existing and future uh, commercial uh, well, member of the, the commercial ecosystem to find their business model, uh, because TDF has got some statutory goals. We have to follow the statutory goals, and we should not, in a way, hinder or in a way, stop following those goals because that may, let's say, damage or may influence a business model that's been created a while back, okay, by a commercial entity. So the commercial entities need to evolve around us, so the needs of TDF and the LibreOffice community. Okay, Paolo, if you have finished, I would hand yeah. over to uh, Kaolan. And I'm praying, again, everyone to be shorter, just to... Uh, not to shrink your opinions, but just to uh, give more space to everyone. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll be very brief. I'll just pick up one or two things about ecosystems and the like. Um, I think one of the things that, that that strikes me is that we often see these announcements and they're often endorsed by the Document Foundation itself about large migrations and how great that is that, for instance, an entire state is moving over to Libre Office or things like that. Uh, I'm always very, very worried when I see those kind of things. I think it might be a good policy to at least only mention these things if we know they're partnered with one of the, you know, professional support people and not say, you know, it's great and wonderful that the entire uh, Department of Quebec has moved over to LibreOffice when it's been done, you know, completely on a shoestring by people who don't know what they're doing or what not to make sure that, you know, we say this is uh, we're, we, this is great news because we are partnered with one of the people on our list, so we're confident that it's going to be a success. So that we uh, kind of at least that we encourage people um, to be part of of, of that uh, support network. Um, I think the other thing, just uh, on these RTL and all the rest, yeah, those are specialized topics, and I think maybe uh, the SC and and the budget is, is probably where we need to go there, and it is probably worthwhile. 
you know, considering what are their pain points there were a shortage of developers in that RTL, we've a shortage of developers in the database field and whatnot, make a list of, of those areas and, and prioritize them when we're thinking about budget tenders. Right, you've been really, really brief. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the next is uh, Thorsten and then Cor. Thorsten. Okay, so, so I, I won't comment anymore on, on this ecosystem. I think I made my point there. Um, just to echo Quaylen, um, the, indeed, the, the way to, I think if you ask me as a board um, or board candidate, that I'm, I'm most happy to, to, um, to put money there, TDF money to, to enable that sort of um, that sort of community. So, so diversity inclusion clearly is, is, is one one of my um, um, one of my my goals for, for for the next board term. But on this on this at, at the same time, that, that that's something that we can as a board kind of wish into existence. That's something that is probably uh, a, a technical process like QA uh, product management routish like what is missing what is needed what needs to be done in, in technical terms and then like have it uh, take its uh, have the process um, um do its course uh, which means take this to the esc uh, first file some bugs maybe some meter bugs take this to the esc have a proposal have it costed estimated and then I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the board will be very, very sympathetic um, to fund that, to enable that, as as the board of um, earlier boards did in other areas. Um, but it's again that that should be something really that 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 comes out of the community, out of the existing people who work in QA, who work in, in UX, who work in development. Um, otherwise, there's a fair chance of of us. Um, doing something silly um, because we don't really know about um, all those intricate details. And, and Jose, you as, as, as a member of that community can play a great role there because you know exactly very likely what, what, what is missing, what is needed, and then we need to turn that into code uh, or into a proposal for, for code. Um, the last question, um, which is the um, survey results about um, native language communities feel often disconnected and not heard. Yes, I think so. I'm, I'm instinctively, instinctively I'm, I'm aware of the problem um, since, since very many years. So I'm, I'm myself part of, of the German community, of the German speaking community. Uh, and, and there's always been this kind of disconnect. Language barriers is a problem. Um, there, there tends to be like like subcultures, subgroups, and then you have like very few people who are then active on the international uh, lists and, and in the international community. And uh, over all those years, I think the only solution that, that I I came up with is like just just keep talking, just invest lots of time into into talking and in particular into listening. So so everyone on the board should really spend time to listen uh, and, and have a food or two in, in their local communities. And if, if we don't have anyone on the board representing a particular community, then those bridges need to be built perhaps by the MC. Board and MC probably could work much closer um, uh, um, in, in that regard. Uh, and if all else fails, then of course, trying to find people who are um, who can build those bridges and then include them some more in the conversation, like regular invitations, encourage them to, to participate, perhaps in, in board calls or, or in other venues. Um, all those, what, what, also what helps is having more communication in writing, but it only goes so far. So at least on the board, um, most of the, the, the more effective uh, meetings that we had were actually calls, like video calls or in-person meetings. Um, this, um, there, there are platforms that, that perhaps facilitate that so more or, or better than, than this plain old mailing list or IRC or matrix chat. So, um, but mostly I, I, I'm, I'm slightly skeptical of, of having technical solutions to uh, uh, 
social problems, and it also includes like like machine translations, which which I, I mostly find hilarious. Um, the, the results and that, that that tends to to actually um, get people further apart because then then somebody talks and you get this translated thing and it, and you like is this person mad? But it's it, this person is not. It's just a translation tennis. So. Yeah, I think long story short, I really don't ha have the, the silver bullet for that, except for just 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 being being humans and and try to overcome and build the bridges and listen a lot um, and and be aware of it. Like really, every single time, um, be aware of the, the fact that um, that that you need to work on including people. I just can confirm that the, the MC is trying and striving to uh, uh, help in this, obviously. And uh, also, I would say that those sessions we are held, holding, um, probably they are going in that direction, especially uh, yesterday when uh, you were there and you, you could, uh, you know, see how effective was, you know, the uh, uh, having a live translation by uh, Naruijo, who was so kind to to uh, volunteer for that, and probably it could be a, a way much better than uh, machine translating, obviously. And uh, so count on us, uh, as obviously as far as we can. And uh, I would hand over to Core. Are you there, Core? Yeah, still... score is there. Yeah. Talk, talking, <laughs> talking to closed microphone. We we'll never get feedback. Yeah, <laughs> talk, talking about. Uh, uh, I think the Document Foundation is uh, one of the uh, the important things in my experience is that it's a unique combination of, of a lot of uh, people with different interests, things they like, things that are important for them. And I think that 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 all comes with with different roles. For example, if if we look at the uh, 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 the, the fact of if, of interoperability, uh, developers are the people uh, who have to be in charge in charge of development. They have the knowledge of code. They have the knowledge of product and and getting things fixed and improved there. On the other hand, business people. Uh, are people who are able to to find business to organize it in a way and and to make money of that that allows them to be developers. Uh, on the other hand, in in the community we have users who are important because they have ideas. They can can help with documentation. They can help other users, and we have marketing people that are extremely uh, people who love to talk to to bring across the message. And and I think if if and and I think uh, Paolo also or also said it, if if marketing people go towards governments, uh, public administration, who have the responsibility to 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 to, to take good care of of the, their public administration, which is of of our, uh, which is of us all. If, so if if we encourage public administration uh, as marketing people then there can come business from that and, and you see that in the ecosystem now and then that indeed from uh, big uh, uh, big initiatives there that gives new uh, developments and and hopefully that that will grow continue to grow the ecosystem um so i, I think it, it's it's really a natural way and and giving all the the the, the opportunity to do the role and to make sure that the document foundation is a place for sustainable development and where uh, where uh, ecosystem partners find a sustainable ground too. That's one thing. The other completely different thing is, is documentation. W what I see in, in the documentation team, uh, active uh, people, but w with their own likes. Uh, they like to do this work and that work. And it, it is like development, people uh, who do the work decide mostly in which direction it goes so might there be uh, indeed because of uh, polls or a, a general move in in how public public works or development or that that within board discussions with other people etc 
we get the strong impression uh, that that may be a different direction from what the people are doing already. It, it could be good. Then maybe w with an extra fund or project or whatever, uh, something we we could uh, encourage them. But in the end, uh, more than doing some encouragement, uh, it, it's it's not what we are able to do. I think it's 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 really the people who work that uh, that make the direction. That, that that it's the musicians who make the music. Is that something people say? Is something in that direction? Okay, that's it. I like this, you know, uh, figure of musicians. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I tried even. <laughs> yeah, great. And I would hand over to my homonymous, Gabriel. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel. Uh, so I'd like to, to answer to Olivier's question about the ecosystem by talking a little bit about my experience. So besides integrating the online uh, uh, application into our uh, into our uh, products. I'm also trying to lobby inside my company to get more involved into uh, into community uh, at different levels of, on development side, on promotion side, on donation side, and so on. And in order uh, to to get uh, some success on this uh, uh, lobbying part, well, I need uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, to to reach some levels of uh users of uh, uh revenues and, and so on it's not it's not something uh, it's not something simple so by uh, uh trying to reach those uh, those uh, required levels i um uh, i'm trying to diversify as much as possible the uh, the way in which the libreoffice application the online project is used in our uh, applications and uh, from uh, this uh, experience uh, the uh, arises the, the idea that we should uh, try to get more involved in with uh, with ecosystem partners and potential ecosystem partners by meeting them in the middle asking them discussing with them asking them and finding out what are their needs in uh, in which ways the application can be uh, can be used what are the strongest part of uh, of, uh, of LibreOffice? What are the weakest parts? What are missing, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, and uh, I think that uh, we can do that uh, at uh, um, uh, by by organizing some kind of I don't know seminaries, meetings uh, uh, in 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 this dire in this direction. Um, um, about the excessive uh, ecosystem concentration, I think I think that uh, our community has uh, has uh, an important uh, volunteer uh, part which can counterbalance this uh, 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 this ecosystem, uh, let's say, influence. Uh, what is the strategy to increase the ecosystem out of, of out from Europe? Well, uh, I don't know very well. Uh, <laughs> beside my uh, home and my city <laughs> i don't know very well other parts of uh, of the world um, uh, especially regarding the uh, the libreoffice project and, and 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 the community but i think that we should uh, discuss this with the, with the, our local communities in different parts of the of the world uh, and trying to get them uh, involved maybe in the same way as i as i already explained uh, a little bit earlier Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, since there are no questions at the moment, I have one. <laughs> no, there is one. OK, uh, from Oliver. Hello. What is the strategy to reach government? Which is exactly what I was thinking, <laughs> which is a, the, the strategy to reach governments, commissions, uh, international organization to leverage liberal office for their people and leverage business for the ecosystem. It looks like he read in my mind because my questions were more or less this. I mean, uh, probably uh, my question would have been uh, if the board, the new board, uh, has the intention to lobby somehow uh, here and there the various, um, you know, governments and, and whatever. Because from my point of view, um, this would indeed leverage and, and create the ecosystem because you know, uh, creating the demand, obviously, uh, there would be an offer. So uh, Emiliano is the first one who uh, raised his hand. Please go on. 
which raised the end just one second before the question come out, but that's okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyways, um, that's a good question. I think somehow the board says to um, think of a way to interact with politics and with uh, public administration, large, uh, large organization, not for profit organization and so on, and try to, um, how can I say, to, to uh, foster and uh, try to get LibreOffice in a better position. Uh, probably the efforts are there, but they are not particularly um, large enough, let's say that, more or less. Um, that, that, that's mostly it. Probably we have just to, as, uh, as someone else put it, that have some priorities and try to understand uh, where put our efforts on. That's that's it. Uh, I, I see a lot of opportunities for TDF to to shine, and uh, I would love to hear the the, um, the opinion of everyone. Uh, also on the local communities. Um, my my original um, asking me originally asking for for the voice was um, about the uh, diversity and inclusion point that uh, Marina brought up and uh, Torsen explained uh, about uh, quite quite well to be honest. Um, I think that leaving out the local communities uh, would be a, a, an error, would be something that would would want uh, wouldn't do much better to to the to the to the community, to the the foundation. So uh, yes, we definitely have to check into how to uh, better understand local communities and how to provide them. Uh, for tools to be able to uh, do their efforts. I like the proposal from Gabriel, to be honest. Uh, let's work on that. Okay, um, the next in line is Paolo. Just, uh, uh, just a, let's say a suggestion from my side. Uh, probably most of the things we are uh, saying and listening Probably they have been already said in the past, but uh, anyway, we are here to to talk about that anyway. So, my proposal is, uh, whenever it will be possible again to travel, probably it could be uh, a good idea to reach that communities in person. Uh, you know, sending someone from the board and uh, getting in contact with them in their place. I volunteer to travel everywhere. <laughs> Me too, but I'm not in the board. <laughs> but uh, as a member of the commission committee, yeah, yeah. we we <laughs> we will invite someone from the MC. Great, great, thank you. Okay, let's hand over to Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, being able to uh, uh, meet again, I think is quite is quite important because uh, it's it's like this. That, for example, I uh, when I moved for the first time here in Luxembourg, uh, you know. I was able to meet with people, network with people, and started creating relations with, with people. Uh, and then when COVID happened, so just a year after I, uh, I arrived, then it made things a bit more complicated, naturally. Uh, because, yes, we can do these nice meetings, but it's, it's not the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and so I'm trying bit by bit to create uh, a community that then naturally will be linked also to the uh, LibreOffice community because I'm trying to create a, a, a general open source community which is related naturally to the various projects uh, that I'm uh, bringing forward, for example, with Gaia X and, uh, and uh, interoperability and uh, uh, naturally replacement of the various vendors with open source platforms. So there's a lot going on now. Doing it online is, is, a, is a bit more complicated, but then everything. Hopefully, with the new year, is going uh, to open up and everything is going to happen all together. So that's why, I, at least I hope for, for the new year. In terms of uh, the strategy, uh, the question also from, uh, from Oliver, well, the strategy is already kind of slowly happening. Uh, so at least from, uh, from my side, I've been uh, uh, in contact and working with uh, 
European institutions and local governments to actually put in place, uh, uh, you know, various programs related to, to open source, which then will benefit us so uh, to liberal office and, uh, and, uh, and its community. One of the, uh, the, uh, the effort that finally paid off is the uh, upcoming uh, uh, back bounty on, uh, on liberal office, which has been actually proposed by the European Commission. So the European Commission reached out to me uh, because we have already a relationship in relation to, uh, to open source and the open source program offices, uh, which I tend to develop also here in Luxembourg, uh, uh, you know, asking if we, we wanted to do it. So that is already a first result paying off uh, from the, the effort. Uh, we should officially, as TDF, invest more in this type of uh, uh, relationship management. Uh, so invest more in uh, being visible uh, to this institution be, because then at the end when they see us, when they see the large community that is behind the LibreOffice, then naturally it's going to be easier for them to trust us and start implementing LibreOffice. As I said, having been a pain, so the LibreOffice is already in their app store, so in the European Commission app store, so that is a good start. We just to, got to uh, keep keep pushing. Then while we are pushing, while we're creating opportunity, while we uh, start converting, while well, upgrading, as I generally say, uh, more institution, more government, more organization to uh, Linux and uh, LibreOffice uh, uh, or LibreOffice on Windows while they are so prepared to migrate to, uh, to, to, to Linux, then naturally that will create bigger opportunity also for the uh, uh, the business ecosystem. Uh, as I said, I think the business e ecosystem needs to uh, actually find their path uh, and actually together then being able uh, to, uh, to to create opportunities instead of limiting TDF, you know, area for operation so that we don't overlap too much on, uh, uh, you know, in, the, in, their, in, in their interest. So that is something that anyway, we're going to have to work on so that the rules are going to be clear uh, for all. Okay, thank you, Paolo. Uh, and now I think it's, yes, the, the turn of Thorsten, maybe. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so first of all, Paolo, I have to agree. Um, the, um, uh, the, the crucial part, obviously, um, if, if you ask for strategy, then um, you need to be present. You need to network uh, and you need to be there and visible um, to the governments and the organizations. Um, and I also agree that perhaps that is a little bit underdeveloped um, um, on the TDF side, because it's real work um, and COVID clearly didn't help there. Um, on the other hand, we are, we are present and in some ways we are, for example, um, um, a member, TDF is a member of the Open Source Business Alliance. But, but there's certainly much, much more that, that we could do. Uh, and and the, the, um, the amount, like the, the, airs, the air cover, the, 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 the visibility that, that we're having, even in Europe, where, um, where the, 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 the foundation has a very strong um, um, backing, um, the, the board could do more there. Um, when you look at the international landscape, then, um, that, that will be my second answer to that, then TDF must rely on their local communities. And I think that's also probably the answer in general, that TDF and LibreOffice has been strongest um, when, when we were like relying and, and, and enabling um, the, the very many, like hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people worldwide, that, that is our community that far, far exceeds anything the, 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 the 10 people on, on a board could ever do, even if you add to that TDF staff. So, so the, the reach and, and the, the, the power that the community has um, really far exceeds what we could do there. So actually, I think that the best strategy um, TDF or, or the board could pursue would be to enable um, the, the community, like provide them with, with the needs like marketing materials, um, playbooks, um, reference stories, like that it's also like that also works internationally, like like there, there's a great success story in France or in, in, in the UK or in Germany. Uh, and then like 
bring that in a form that the people can can use that and approach their, their own or or like let's say successful strategies in the past that worked for for some countries for some uh, for some governments um, and and that would be the meter strategy so asking the board to like have some minute strategy and then do this and this and that and then succeed um, that's nice we should do more of that but I think that the the winning strategy is like leverage the community um, and and that that might be different in in uh, in Taiwan than in in the US for example um, but but listen to those people and then ask what they need and then provide them with that okay uh, at the moment uh, I second to that Tulio and uh, okay uh, Sophie is writing that um, it's okay, it's read, but uh, obviously then the board should uh, support those uh, local community communities too. Uh, I would say uh, yeah, that, that's the given. So, so the board should the, the, the my my prime so the primary role the board has is to enable community to work. Like if there's if there's if there's something that blocks community work, the, the board needs to solve that. Enabling people to to get their 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 projects going. That that would be my my. If if I would have just one sentence to describe board work, that would be that. Okay, Candy uh, raised his hand. Before letting him speak, uh, I had a small question about you know we are talking about lobbying and uh, uh, talking and presenting the foundation and being present with the foundation in the governments and whatever. What do you candidates think about, for example, is just a proposal or maybe a provocation, if you wish, having a staff member appointed to that, someone who is who has, you know, the, the really the task to uh, attend such, you know, uh, governments and meetings and uh, so on and regularly and to to lobby and to let's say prepare the market and prepare, you know, the uh, the ecosystem as well, Candy. Okay, so <laughs> before you add it, uh, this <clears throat> additional question, I wanted to add that uh, that uh, uh, one like additional thing, like how to how to enable and help the local communities is actually uh, like uh, make as many things uh, in the board as possible uh, in the open, uh, so so that like uh, people do not feel like. The board is some, you know, closed, detached group that does something inside, and like why we need the board in the end, like because, uh, like, uh, in the board minutes, like there is, oh well, this was private, this was private, this was private, and that was private. <clears throat> so, so I think that uh, if we if we were more in the open, uh, that would help. Uh, that would help understanding that that board is there to listen uh, to the communities. Yeah, I obviously do agree. Uh, this is uh, sure, and probably this is the reason for which some communities are, you know, uh, s uh, slightly and slowly uh, becoming far, you know, uh, going far from the from the project and from the TDF. Then it's the turn of Thorsten who raised his hand. Yeah, I. So for once, I, I probably disagree with you, Emiliano. That's that's not happening very often. Um, the the problem is that it it would be if if you have one person doing that, this person would be so so. I, I know effective lobbying lobbying persons, but they are very very close to to one country usually, or or to to one city. Let's say Brussels, like e, EU lobbying, and. Actually, what we probably need is, is, is 15, 20, 30 kind of like this, this people like all over the world. So, and it would, I would then have the feeling that it would be unfair. So that if we would have somebody in Berlin, then the rest of Europe and the rest of the world would look at it and be envious. Or if we would have someone in Brussels, then um, the, the, um, the Asian community or, or the the, the um, American community would look at that and wonder whether we're there. Then again, if it helps, why not? Let's try it. Um, but but 
I think broadly as TDF, we should try more to, to, to balance out rather than to focus more, even more on, on one single um, place. My, my instinct. Yes, but probably as Emiliano has just written, you know, having just one probably wouldn't be enough, but it's surely more than having none. So, <laughs> and it's a starting point from my point of view. And what also I could say to, I could add, is that uh, where, I say having one appointed to that uh, as, as a staff member would be uh, a way to be uh, sure uh, of having a presence. Then we already have volunteers just like Paolo, for example, but also Franklin, and uh, many uh, others who are all already doing that. So, I mean, what I mean is that we have people volunteering for that, but uh, I would like to know that if we don't, and uh, anyway, we have an official uh, person in charge for that. So he could or she could help uh, the, the volunteers, uh, for example, whenever they need some help and go there and whatever. By the way, time is really running out, so I uh, would say that the next is Paolo, isn't it? Uh, yep. No, Cor, sorry. Corey was... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think uh, lobbying is great stuff. I, as I said, I, I talk with the mem members of parliament now and then, but also I've seen when I was a member of the regional parliament myself a long time ago, uh, I, I see how real professional lobbyists uh, spend time uh, and build relations. And, and that's close to what has been said, that you need basically someone in every town or whatever. Um, it, it's hard to do. And that's one thing. The other thing is, is uh, I, I think it, it's primarily a, a question that belongs to our marketing team, uh, where they, where they say, see great news, uh, needs. Uh, and, and uh, really, by as, as open source communities uh, uh, bring the efforts together, because th then we can be most effective. Having said that, that that maybe putting some extra, uh, let's see if if we can bring some extra value to to lobbying in the next board. Uh, but it, it it it's it's a good thing to look at. I, I'm not sure if it will be really easy, but, but, but maybe there are opportunities because hiring someone uh, and saying we do something, that's quite easy. But in the end, we want to have a reasonable idea that when money is spent by TDF, that, that we can see, oh, yes, uh, therefore and therefore it, it really makes, uh, makes sense. But thanks for the idea. Yeah, it's probably... You know, uh, again, it's a starting point and it's an experiment we could do and uh, and probably he or she could also travel, hopefully, <laughs> according to the new rules and the, the pandemic and whatever. Uh, you're still volunteering, I hear. No, uh, <laughs> let's say that <laughs> I love to travel, but I don't like so much politicians. And so uh, I could, uh, you know, bring the, uh, the bags and <laughs> do that. <laughs> By the way, Paolo. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Just to, uh, uh, in, in a way, bring us all my experience. So why I'm talking, you know, with people at a certain level in various European institutions? Because I'm a private citizen. Okay. So if you write an email to the director of that institution or in the European Commission, your email is not going to go only to that person. It's going to go to a team that's going to have to evaluate the email. And that email is going to have, you know, is going to create ripples around the institution, if it's interesting. Okay. So I, as a private citizen, sometimes have more influence than a lobbyist, but I don't have to spend five million a year for a lobbying team. The point is that, you know, we should all be citizen lobbyist that's where we're gonna get the real results because if we we employ a lobbyist we're gonna have to spend millions to try to kind of open slightly a door to some people in brussels it's not gonna work the noise that we got to make is from the base so each one of us should actually say okay you know here are my meps in the in the parliament here are the people that matter the european commission 
uh, or in, in other institution, you personally have to write to them. Okay, so each one of us can be a lobbyist that is a lot more efficient than paying a professional. So I will just be totally against wasting money for professional lobbyists. Uh, then the other thing that we, we got to do, naturally, I am personally following so various other organizations, various other, other coalition that are trying to, in a way, affect amendments in the uh, uh, Digital Market Act or similar uh, laws that are coming along. So we are actually working through the MEP to implement uh, changes to these proposed laws so that our rights are being protected. So TDF should mo be more present on that side. So on the side where we can be visible, we can see that actually we are, uh, we, we can show that we are actually protecting European citizen. And I say European just because I'm looking at the perspective of the European uh, uh, market. But for example, so yesterday we talked about Japan. So in Japan, they have, they have certain things about on which they can also act. So actually take the example, see what works here, see what can be transferred there, there and vice versa. Same thing actually can be done in other country, in Latin America. It, you know, we just got to discover what works in a specific country. Some of the countries may be a bit more difficult because the politician don't have certain rules that they got to respect here in Europe. So naturally, let's say the lobbying should take uh, other forms, but still trying once again to go from the base. So that is in a way the same effect that we've got to create for the liberal office community to be part of the change. So to be part of this, just send an email, uh, a fax, a letter to your representative to make them see that there are people that care about the office. That is how change seems to be happening, or at least this is how I've been able to make it happen. Okay, Paolo, so um, we are going, we are, to be honest, we are already out of time, meaning that we are over time. So uh, I understand if someone have to leave uh, and, uh, by the way, I would like to quickly give the the microphone to uh, Uwe, who asked to, to, to speak, and then finally to Thassen. Uwe? Okay, thank you. So just, if it comes to lobbying, my experience, I wouldn't say that Paul is wrong, but I don't think this is, uh, this is enough to get it working, because uh, you, you need and what what you what you told is is quite right. You, lobbying needs a professional support. You have to have to be there, as you can see perhaps in the FSFE. There is there is a professional who doesn't from from the morning until the evening nothing else than lobbying free software. So this is probably not that what the PDF or the LibreOffice project needs to do. Um, the first thing which comes to my head is if lobbying is successful, it opens a lot of business chances. So perhaps this could be more a thing of the professional ecosystem, at least to, uh, to think about what is a sensible lobby strategy to open these business chances. And the second thing which comes to me is that it's quite useless to talk about lobbying uh, without having a clear idea of what to lobby. And in, in my perception and listening to this discussion, it could be perhaps a good idea not to think about lobbying about, hey, uh, ODF is the best thing you ever can do, but uh, more working on lobbying to foster the visibility of the professional support system. Uh, the ecosystem partners from LibreOffice can offer, because I think one, one of the most uh, breaking thing is that uh, is the perception that this software is okay, it's nice, it's free, but who helps me if I work with it? 
who helps me to integrate it in my processes. This is also a kind of a blind blind uh, point in in uh, in working on LibreOffice. I've, in my experience, um, the decision of of LibreOffice versus, let's say, Microsoft Office isn't isn't made by the product itself, but by its integration in other solutions. And this is this is also a thing we we have we have a real real big hole in our history because we have a great office suite, but we have really, it's really hard to integrate it in some professional business solution. So I, I don't know, I don't know the answers on this, but I think this, this can be, this can be things where the TDF may, may have an influence on the development. So lobbying would be more than uh, propagating our professional solution, our professional developers program, our professional migrating programs, and also to foster uh, some maybe strategic enterprises to uh, offer also an integration, not only of Microsoft Office, but also an integration of LibreOffice in their programs. This could be, I think, this could be, this could be a direction lobbying has to go. Thank you. Um, this is kind of, uh, from my point of view, uh, the chicken and egg problem, because as I said before, indeed lobbying probably would uh, create the demand, more demand, and uh, hopefully uh, the offer, but indeed it could become a problem because when there is the demand, but there is no offer, it could become indeed a big problem, a huge problem. It, 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 it's all, it's, I think it's all great advice. And when a new board is, is, is in place, uh, we will think about it. And, and when we have, may, maybe we can, when we meet, we can have a, a, a brainstorm session around him. Yeah, I think we already yeah. talked about it. That's, that's why we actually started with the marketing and communication uh, uh, program. Uh, which actually has been built and actually still progressing because it, it, uh, uh, it needs so the input from uh, from other organizations. So maybe so those that develop, uh, uh, let's say, the, their commercial product based on LibreOffice, but also by those that actually simply do training, simply in a way, training migrations and 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 things like that. So we got to get all these organization uh, on board. So that we can actually show that the uh, the the offer you know follows the demand, and this, this is let's say marketing in which on which we probably haven't excelled uh, in uh, in the in the past few years, but probably we are already working on. So that is not lobbying. So lobbying is something completely different, which I you know I let's say hate being called a lobbyist. I'm not uh, in a in a way because for me it's a dirty word being a lobbyist. Uh, but anyway, being able to pro promote, uh, you know, uh, uh, our ideas and, 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 and our plan, that is important, not as a lobbyist, uh, but, or maybe in conjunction with other organizations that really promote open source, promote digital rights and, and, and these kind of things, so we can work all together, even without being in Brussels. So that, that is the important thing. And then naturally, let's see how we can extend the marketing side to be Let's say more seen. Uh, one of my proposals was actually to invest in uh, in uh, in marketing. That is very important for us. Okay, Paolo, thank you. Um, I don't know if Thorsten wants to speak, or otherwise we have also Gabriel who raised his hand. Um, so I'll probably make it short. So I, I just um, answering in the chat on on this travel question. I think that that's an absolute. Um, 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 a slam dunk home runs so again that that's something that tdf is is there to help with if, if there's if, if people can't travel because of random problems we should be there to help them um and that's it's mostly an administrative problem and i think i'm pretty sure that we can somehow solve that by being creative and if the, we, we tried what i suggested and let's try something else um but, but that should be clearly a priority if, if we can travel again to get people in, in one place uh, and on the lobbying um, question, um, it's kind of interesting to see that. I, I, my, my proposal would be let, let's not fight over what we should do, but let's try to do it all. And, and let's try to leverage the community and, and all the great energies that we have there. And, and everybody's trying to do their thing. 
on helping what they can do best and have TDF and the board um, enable um, the community work. And yeah, and good, really good lobbying costs a lot of money. And um, so I, I think we, we probably from, 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 the, from the leverage that we could get uh, trying to enable community, I think is really the best we could do for the moment. Uh, then we have Gabriel who raised his hand. I would just say something about the integration. Uh, uh, I guess was Core mentioning about the integration. No, about I can't remember who was. I'm sorry. Uh, someone was talking. Oh, Uwe, Uwe, Uwe was talking about the integration with uh, with other products. Uh, this is a point that we should uh, also probably probably not now, but uh, care about because from my point of view also is something that. Uh, let's say I also see this problem in my in my daily job, and uh, but we'll see hopefully. By the way, Gabriel, your turn, and probably the last because it's really really late. Thanks, Gabriel. So about the strategy to reach government, uh, uh, what kind of institution and so on. One of the uh, uh, one of one of the uh, advantages that the LibreOffice has. Uh, is is that it is free, okay, zero cost. And uh, when we're discussing uh, about uh, governments, uh, uh, commissions, uh, we we can go even lower uh, local uh, um, local um, uh, communities, local uh, institutions, and, and so on. I I, th I I think we can. Uh, one of the directions uh, is is to to trying to reach uh, those. Um, <clears throat> Uh, institutions which uh, which uh, um, for which uh, this is a, a major a major gain we can uh, we can create a, 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 we can we can enter into that niche and uh, of course the application is not uh, the, this this is not the only advantage of the application that is free it, it, it is a very good application but by reaching to those uh, to those uh, um, uh, let's say elements uh, <clears throat> Uh, we can uh, we can create a, a base of, uh, uh, of, uh, of 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 supporters, we, which can then, by experiencing our application, can uh, can um, uh, can promote by themselves uh, 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 to to another institution and so on. So, so I think that uh, uh, we should uh, um, we should um, speculate this uh, this uh, advantage that the application has, and this is uh, just one of the directions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you really much, Gabriel. And thanks to everyone who was attending as speakers, as listeners, as, you know, uh, members interested and also community members interested in this talk. We are over 20 minutes uh, over the time which was uh, scheduled. So I would say again, thank you all and uh, see you tomorrow for the ones who will be able to attend and for the uh, Latin America session, let's say, at least as the, you know, uh, time zone. Not on Thursday. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, I think yes, it's, it's on uh, Thursday. Sorry. Yes, okay, I'm burned. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it was okay, an so interesting and busy meeting. Thanks all. Indeed. indeed. Thanks, indeed. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for everyone that participated. It was very really interesting. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, Thank Sophie. You. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next meeting. Bye, Bye Gustavo. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, let's leave. We have uh, all the recording uh, machine connected. Uh, I don't know if we need to to uh, capture the um, the comments on the chat or I I took well, some uh, I took some notes. Don't worry. I also took all the the questions that would made. Okay, great, okay. great. The so, recording um, in any case. So um, yeah, it's there. There was the last one from from uh, Gustavo. Maybe that was. Uh, well, but it was discussed in the, in the in the chat, anyways. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, that's why I was asking if someone copied the the, the whole chat, just because you know there were questions and also answers and, and a debate on on the chat. Yeah.
Yep. Um, also, thank you very much, Cloth, for acknowledging that the recordings were fine. <laughs> oh, great, this time. <laughs> I have the full chat, don't worry. So now okay. let's disconnect and let's close this session. So thank you. Thank you very much again for organizing. Uh, just one point, if I can. Yeah. Uh, no, let's please. just try to coordinate more with the, with the questions. If we have a question and leave maybe one or two.